I'm here to talk about creating a world deep web. So uh, this is an idea that uh, uh, requires some attention from all of us. I think uh, this is uh, something that affects our society uh, a great deal. Uh, when we refer to internet, uh, we call it, uh, routinely we call it the World Wide Web. And uh, that's actually true because the web has reached, the internet has reached uh, uh, all the countries in the world. It is uh, available in uh, most, uh, well, actually all cities and uh, a lot of uh, semi-urban areas and probably some amount of uh, uh, rural areas as well. Now, but it is surprising to know that actually 50% of humanity is actually not uh, still able to access internet. And uh, this is about 3 billion people worldwide. Uh, certainly this is a challenge on which a number of companies are working. Uh, you have uh, Facebook and Google uh, doing their own thing where uh, they are planning to um, launch uh, drones and satellites and balloons into the atmosphere. And these uh, devices are supposed to uh, beam internet down to your home. Now, these are uh, certainly uh, quite uh, exciting ideas, but our idea uh, is slightly different. I would say it's a bit more grounded, not uh, so much up in the air. Uh, uh, but I'll come to that in a minute. So first, uh, we really need to understand what is it that uh, makes this problem so important, right? I mean, we need to know why it's required. So if you look at uh, what are the uh, challenges in reaching uh, internet uh, worldwide, uh, the basic uh, requirements are, you know, uh, to get uh, internet connection at your home. And uh, the penetration has to be, uh, is not really there in rural areas. That's where most of your, uh, uh, the gap in uh, internet penetration is there. And what's the uh, issue that is closest to heart for people is uh, education of their children. That's, uh, I think, everyone will agree with that. And, uh, you know, today, if you see the quality of education that is available to people, it's not uh, uh, really, uh, it leaves, uh, leaves a lot to be desired. And, uh, you know, the, the, the academic results which we see, uh, they reflect that. And there's a general recognition that this needs to improve. So if you look at it, uh, this is a, the picture on the right actually shows a, a, a classroom which is enabled through a satellite link where uh, the children are uh, you know, excited to hear uh, an expert teacher on the subject uh, talk about uh, you know, uh, what they need to learn through slides and uh, multimedia kind of presentation. And this creates a lot of interest. And uh, in fact, this program has been running in uh, about 1,000 schools in Karnataka. Uh, it is uh, conceived and uh, operated by IM Bangalore. Uh, now, these uh, uh, the, the organizers could actually be very happy that this has achieved this result and you know, uh, uh, rest on the laurels. But it goes to their credit that they want to expand this. Uh, they recognize some of the things that need to be improved. Now, one of the things that happens in a satellite link is it's a one-way communication. So you just get to listen to the teacher. But as you know, uh, no learning is complete uh, unless you ask questions. And for that, you need an interactive uh, connectivity. So students should be able to ask tough questions of the teacher, and uh, hopefully they have the answers. But at least there is a medium. Now, uh, what does uh, interactivity require? It requires primarily an internet connection, a broadband connection. And this would, uh, uh, the, the management believes that this is something that would greatly improve the quality of education that they can deliver. The other aspect that uh, we look at quality of life is healthcare. And if you look at rural uh, healthcare centers today, uh, people have accessibility issues. So if you look at uh, now the primary healthcare centers, uh, there are, uh, there's of course staff available uh, who do their best to, uh, you know, take care of the health issues uh, that they encounter. But imagine a situation where actually an enter uh, a remote expert for a specific uh, problem, like a specialist, 
can uh, video conference with uh, this primary health uh, center and uh, diagnose and treat uh, whatever the problem that the patient has. Uh, you can imagine that this kind of a system will bring great amount of benefit. Uh, the other aspect is really the economic uh, status. Now, if you look at uh, rural producers of goods, uh, this is an untapped potential in e-commerce, which is uh, today not so much visible in our lives. We think of e-commerce more as uh, online shopping or uh, you know uh, booking air tickets. That's e-commerce for us. But actually, if you see, there's a whole amount, whole lot of inefficiency in the supply chain that. Uh, affects the producers uh, in a negative way. This inefficiency is that uh, the agents or the, the people who actually are the gap between the producers and consumers, uh, they capture most of the commission. So it's an, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's a cost inefficiency that is uh, happening in the system and e-commerce can uh, you know, eliminate that. Now if you have this uh, uh, handloom weaver, if he is able to reach uh, the pur purchaser directly uh, through an e-commerce platform, that would uh, greatly benefit him. And the same thing goes for even agriculturalists uh, who can sell their produce uh, directly to uh, whoever needs to use it. So there's no doubt, uh, looking at these examples, that uh, internet in the rural areas is going to uh, be definitely a life changer. It's a uh, it's, it has a big impact on the GDP, in fact. Uh, if you look at, uh, there are some studies by Broadband Commission that say that if internet penetration increases by 10%, then it could contribute about 1.4 uh, percentage points to the GDP. So it's clearly a big uh, uh, game changer. Now if you look at uh, the current situation in India, uh, if you look at, uh, uh, you know, there are about 40% of villages are going to be planned to get a fiber, fiber optic uh, termination. So you get one gigabits per second in the Gram Panchayat or the village uh, headquarters. Now this is a great thing uh, and uh, you know that will definitely set a stage for uh, solving the rural internet problem. But is it entirely solved? Uh, as you can probably guess, the answer is no because that's what I'm here to talk about. Now if you look at uh, uh, what is the problem? If you if you see the uh, uh, one gigabit per second optical fiber coming to your gram panchayat, uh, the gap which is there between the users and this uh, big fat pipe of internet it ha needs to be bridged, and this is uh, called uh, last hop problem in 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 terms of telecom uh, uh, and networking. So this reaching of the rural end users is slightly different. But most of the time, uh, if you see technology developers, they talk about last mile connectivity issues. Now, there's, there itself, uh, uh, there's a problem, because in rural areas, the, the distances that you need to cover to reach uh, individual users is a lot bigger because of the sparse population density. And so last mile connectivity is not really the issue. It's actually the last 10 mile connectivity. So what you need for this is actually uh, some sort of a wireless technology which will have longer range. Obviously, it's not possible to reach these distances with, uh, say, optical fiber in the last 10 miles or uh, a DSL phone line. So what you need is really something that can wirelessly reach the other side. Now, how do we get this? So uh, the answer is actually, uh, theoretically, it's quite simple. It's basically, uh, this picture gives a clue, but I'll explain what that is. So uh, if you remember in the old, uh, uh, in the 80s, uh, uh, there was, uh, there used to be this uh, rooftop antenna for receiving TV signals. And you had, uh, you had to point it to the TV tower, and you would draw a cable down and connect it to your TV. And you could probably get one or two uh, over the air, uh, so-called over the air uh, TV channels. Now, somewhere in the 90s, uh, I think uh, the cable and satellite uh, completely took over and you now get 500 channels. So this uh, technology which was previously used, uh, there's a big spectrum that is uh, reserved for it, which is from 100 to 800 megahertz. And this uh, is today, actually, most of it is lying unused. Uh, but it has uh, excellent properties. 
and that is uh, uh, long-range uh, transmission. So the signals at these wavelengths can propagate a lot further. So the kind of weak signal that we keep encountering in uh, cellular uh, connectivity uh, is uh, not so much of an issue in, uh, in when you go down to these frequencies. So cellular operates in uh, around 900 megahertz, 2300 megahertz, and this operates from 100 to uh, roughly 800 megahertz. So the advantage is that you can get uh, uh, long-range connectivity with this. Uh, now, what is uh, uh, there's a name given to these uh, unused TV bands, uh, which is called uh, TV white spaces. So basically, the, these are gaps in the spectrum, and uh, they actually have this property. A uh, lot of countries all over the world have actually recognized this value, uh, and uh, they have legislated uh, policies for uh, allowing uh, social, uh, socially useful causes to be uh, to utilize this uh, white space spectrum. And uh, uh, so here I'll, I'm talking about uh, how the uh, white space rural broadband is going to uh, look when you deploy it in rural areas. So uh, basically, this picture we are trying to show here that there's a base station, uh, which is actually your equivalent of a, a tower. Uh, and uh, actually, you can't probably see it there, but basically, this is an internet, which is the cloud, and you get an optical fiber that comes to this building, which is the Gram Panchayat or the village headquarters. And over here, you will have a, a tall antenna, which will basically beam internet to the surrounding villages, whatever the radius it can cover. Uh, and on the user side, in each village or uh, you know a neighborhood, you will have a rooftop antenna, which receives in and you will have uh, uh, basically a modem that is connected to it. So there are two parts of this. One is the base station, other is uh, the modem. And uh, we at Sankhya Labs have developed this technology uh, uh, for uh, uh, using uh, TV white space. There's a standard called WiFAR, which is, it comes from the same organization that has defined Wi-Fi. Uh, it's just that this WiFAR technology uh, can cover a lot longer ranges. So basically, it's ideally suited for uh, rural broadband. Now, what is the benefit of this? I mean, why, why is this uh, so useful? Why should we consider it seriously? Uh, the main reason is actually that this picture shows that you know the, the advantage of this spectrum is that you can actually uh, traverse long distances. So this picture shows the base station on the left and uh, the radio waves can reach the home, which is on the other side, obscured by some terrain. So hilly terrain or foliage uh, can, can actually, uh, you know, it is permeable for these radio waves. So you get internet connectivity over long range. And so that's basically what the net effect is that you get a fewer number of towers. You need a fewer number of towers to uh, bring this internet uh, to the villages. So for a given area, your cost comes down. And also because these consume less electrical power, actually you could potentially run it with solar power. Now how we got here is we are actually uh, we started as a chip company for uh, making chips for TV receivers. And uh, we also made sure when we built the chip that it was reconfigurable, we could download any app into a sort of sort of an app uh, you could download any software into this and make it work like a different wireless uh, device and uh, we found that the same chip could actually be retargeted for things like satellite receivers and drones and uh, uh, the the recent one is uh, white space devices we uh, found uh, from a lot of customers this query that you know uh, there's a promising new area which is coming up uh, there's an international market can you develop this so we went ahead and built the system. So we vertically integrated and built this product, which we call Meghdoot. Uh, so you know, just the Sanskrit name for cloud messenger. So we believe that uh, just like in Kalidasa's uh, classical poetry, uh, there's a demigod uh, Yaksh who is actually separated from his wife uh, for some reason. He's uh, a long distance away. And he wants to send a message, so he requests the cloud to carry the message. So we believe that in today's world, uh, the Yaksha could probably use Meghdoot to have a video conference maybe with his wife. 
So now this is actually uh, not just uh, uh, you know a theoretical uh, product. It's it's already there. In fact, just this week we have installed it in two places. Uh, one is IIT Delhi. Uh, they have uh, they are testing our equipment, and uh, these are trials, of course, with white space. And the other is this school, which is shown here. Uh, this is located in Varanasi, and we have installed our TV white space equipment here. And you can see that uh, the staff at the school is uh, able to use it for a Skype video conference and a, a YouTube session. So this is very much there. It's real. And uh, with this now, uh, what next? So basically, uh, you know, uh, TV wide space is already a reality. It requires government policy because it is concerned spectrum. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, other countries like US um, has already put in place a policy. Uh, United Kingdom has put in a policy. Uh, South Africa and Philippines have adopted it. And countries like Indonesia, which are very similar demographics as us, has, is also very seriously looking into it. And I'm happy to say that even in India, uh, the government is considering uh, TV white space policy. So once that happens, we believe that uh, that sets the stage for us to uh, you know, fulfill this uh, requirement of uh, creating a world deep web. Thank you. <laughs>